become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts and explore the various courses, click on the link shared in the description just below the video. Register and check out the different courses to become an expert in static equipment design. Most commonly used type of supports what we are going to discuss now are skirt support, then leg support, lug support and the final one will be the saddle support. So these are the various type of supports which we are going to discuss one by one. And what are the important features of any support? When to use which kind of support? That is all what we are going to see. Now supports in details. The skirt support, the first one, what we are going to concentrate upon. Now, when to go for the skirt type of support? These are usually used for the very tall columns or H by D ratio is very high, 10, 15, 20, more than six, seven. So when such vessels are there, then these vertical vessels will be placed upon the skirt and then it will be mounted on the ground. Usually skirt supports are also provided for the vertical vessels when the vessel is supposed to be mounted on the grade means on the ground if there is some foundation and on that that vessel supposed to be mounted upon we can say self-supported vessels uh, will have this curved type of supports so we can see uh, you can see over here this is a tall column with one pl platform in between you can see here the ladder has been given uh, for the access of this platform and this tall column has a skirt support but if you look at closely it is not a cylindrical support it's a conical support it's a conical skirt right so when to go for conical type of skirt when to go for cylindrical type of skirt that also is a point of discussion that will be discussed in the upcoming slides hmm. you can see over here this is also very very tall column this is in transit or we can say in tra transportation so uh, now these type of huge vessels uh, will be having a skirt support. You can see the height of this skirt support itself is uh, if we just have a close to 10 meter or something, right? So that much height only of that skirt support is there. And after that, the equipment will be having 30, 40 meters of height. For such a huge L by D ratio, these skirt type supports are provided. You can see over here, there are some members which have been attached inside the skirt shell why these members have been attached this is just because you can see over here there is one tailing lug so when this equipment is going to uh, position at the side it will be erected uh, we have to make it vertical from this horizontal position so when this equipment is going to made a vertical there will be this tailing lug will come into the picture so one crane will hold at this location and another crane will have these two trunnions at the top and then we are going to turn this equipment with the help of those trunnions and the slings with the help of the crane and we'll make it vertical. So what will happen? The higher or we can say at the start, the 50% load will be coming on this tailing lug. So there are chances that this shape will get distorted and it can become oval shape. Depends upon the moment of inertia or the section modulus which is available at this section where we will be having this base ring and this uh, lifting lug or we can say telling lug together. So if that section modulus is not sufficient, then there are chances of deformation that is going to happen. To avoid the deformation and to increase the moment of inertia uh, across this bending or uh, across this uh, force, we have to have these type of bracing, cross bracings inside. These cross bracing numbers also depends upon the type of load and the moment of inertia or the section modulus required to uh, resist for that coming forces and the movements. So here you can see we always start with only one single uh, beam like this, the vertical one. If that is not sufficient, then we are going with the cross one. Or if it is not there, then we can also go with the triangular type of construction. If it is not there, we can also go for the square type of construction. So there are methods given in Dennis Moss. If your section modulus is on the lower side, then how to design this 
cross beams which are going to support this skirt for this equipment so uh, this is uh, why we are, i have taken this picture into the discussion now you can see over here this is also a tall column it is in uh, uh, under fabrication or it's in the shop so you can see over here there is a skirt support and this skirt support is not having any uh, gussets or top ring we can say it is only having a base ring so when to go for only base ring when to go with base ring and uh, gusset when to go with base ring gusset and just a top plate and when to go with base ring gusset and top ring together also that is also we are going to discuss then you can see over here this is also a huge vessel whenever the height of the equipment is on the higher side a higher section modulus is required higher turning moment overturning moment is coming uh, then higher number of bolts are coming and if the present diameter of the skirt is not sufficient to incorporate the enough spacing between the anchor bolt then we are going for this flare type of construction also if the deflection of the equipment is on the higher side then also we are going for this uh, conical type of skirts when the section modulus is on the lower side for the cylindrical shell we are going with this type of conical uh, this skirts to have additional diameter and hence the increase in the moment of inertia and section modulus in that particular region this is also one of the model uh, which is a vertical pressure vessel with the uh, skirt support only so these are the various skirt supports the conical one the straight one you can see over here here also it is a straight one so as we have said now uh, in the previous slide that these uh, skirt shell can have only base ring or base ring with gusset or base ring with gusset and top plate and base ring gusset top plate as well as the top ring so how to decide that whether to go for that or not it all depends upon the loads which will be coming at the skirt base we have seen in combined loading calculation how to calculate the uh, forces which will be generated because of the wind load then uh, because of seismic load how the moments uh, the seismic forces will be generated how the moments will be calculated how the base moments will be calculated how combined stresses developed in that skirt shell calculated the compressive and the tensile and then we have to compare with the allowable and we have to check that whether the stresses are within limit or not so this is how we are going to check whether that skirt shell is safe or not so whatever moments are been uh, coming at the base of that uh, base plate or we can say the skirt that will be transferred to the base plate and through base plate it will be uh, transferred to the foundation correct so in this case what happen depends upon the uh, weight as well as uh, depends upon the moments which will be generated at the base are uh, the section modulus of that plate will be calculated that how much resistance is required uh, so that this section should not fail so when the loads are on the lower side when uh, the height is not much when the weight is not much then uh, there is no need to have even the gussets even if you have only the base ring that will be sufficient but if the equipment height is higher and if the equipment is having higher diameter higher weights then we have to go for other type of arrangement with the skirt so here you can see it is a cylindrical type of support only right what kind of support is this is skirt support with the anchor chair also is called to the base plate arrangement which is at the bottom so it is also called as a anchor chair because <coughs> in this the anchor bolt will be <coughs> resting upon so here we can say the localized bending stresses induced in the head due to the cylindrical skirt shell are generally acceptable and no special analysis is required when we are saying the skirt support cylindrical skirt support here you can see the skirt is attached to the bottom dish end at the conical junction in such a way that the od of the shell and the od of the skirt will be matching one another the ideal way of doing it is what the uh, the center line of the shell and the center line of the skirt should be the same so that the localized stresses develop will be on the lower side so here whenever we will be attaching the skirt exactly at the uh, if there is a distend at the bottom and we are attaching in such a way that uh, the id or od or center line of this skirt and the shell is going to get matched so then this 
a skirt shell will be coming on the most of the time the knuckle portion of any the uh, distend so if the load is transferred vertically as the center line is match or the od is match so the localized stresses developed at this junction are generally or on the safer side and those are not need to be analyzed so when a cylindrical type of support is there with which is having uh, its od matching with the od of the vessel or id matching with the id of the vessel or the center line is matching with the center line of the vessel so let's enlarge this part so this skirt support will look like this so what are the parts over there you can see over here this is the enlarged view so this is skirt shell this portion is nothing but a skirt shell then here comes the base ring the bottom most ring on which this shell is uh, placed upon that is called as a base ring usually this base ring uh, is having inserted inside the shell as well let's say if it is having uh, 150 mm outside projection so at least 50 mm inside projection is there inside this cylindrical shell it will give its a uh, counterbalancing moment also and the shell will be properly placed upon this base ring and the load will be transferred to the base ring correctly the weight will directly coming on to the base ring and not just on the weld so this is a base ring then if the loads are on very lower side so only skirt shell and base ring will be sufficient if the loads on the higher side then we may have to go for base ring and gussets also and if it is also not uh, sufficient then to increase the section modulus we also can introduce a top ring in this total addition so that the total overall section modulus will be on the higher side so this is base ring this is top ring and intermediately gussets will be there and in between every gusset there will be a anchor bolt so let's say there are eight anchor bolts so there will be 8 into 2 16 number of the gussets will be there with the spacing at least 100 to 150 so that the proper access for the tightening of that anchor bolt will be possible many a times what happens people are also putting anchor bolts over here and it will be uh, mounted from here the nut will be here and only the stud is going from here inside the foundation so if it is on top ring uh, based then you can properly tight it at the top ring this type of arrangement will be given if it is at the top ring uh, top ring portion so you can see over here there is one more arrangement where we won't uh, we uh, here we are not having the top ring here we are having just the gussets and the base ring please do remember if my bolt is to be placed on the top ring then these gussets will be having a shape like this where the higher uh, at the higher elevation will be having the higher width of the gusset and the bottom will be having the lower gusset because the anchor bolt will be placed over here so here the section modulus should be on the higher side when the anchor bolt are placed on the base ring so here you can see the gusset shape has got changed it is not having higher width at the top it is having the higher width at the bottom wherever the moment is getting transferred at that junction we must be having a heavier section so here we will be having the gussets like this so here there is no requirement of top ring because this arrangement itself is sufficient to sustain for whatever loadings are coming right so it is not always necessary to always go for the top ring the, that will additionally uh, increase your cost of fabrication and time of uh, fabrication as well so we will always start with only the base ring then base ring with the gussets and if required then top ring will come into the picture so you can see over here this is just a base ring and this base ring is inserted inside the shell so that the shell will be properly sit upon this base ring and the load will be transferred to this base ring and then through the base ring to the foundation through foundation or anchor bolts so this is a typical cylindrical type of support where the localized stresses at this junction we are which are manageable there is no some special analysis or analysis needs to be done so if we uh, look at the, the calculations uh, done in any code or even in pvl it as a software at this junction we are not calculating any junction stresses per se for this type of arrangement now if we have a look at this this is not a cylindrical support this is a conical one so if the height of the equipment is high if the loads on the equipments are high 
if the section modulus at the base is not sufficient if the uh, what we can say the deflection of this uh, entire column is on the higher side we want to control that deflection so we want to have a larger base at the bottom right so in that case also we will be increasing the uh, uh, diameter at the base and we are flaring it out and we are increasing the base because that base is going to pro counter moment to the existing forces if the overturning moment is on the higher side the tensile forces on the higher side so there will be number of boards which will be on increasing right so if let's say instead of 8 there will be some 40 number of boards are required and to tide that 40 number of boards there should be some sufficient spacing required if that spacing is not available in that case also we have to increase the diameter at the base and we have to provide that spacing what maximum angle we should be having this over here with vertical we can have maximum of 15 degree as an angle so total full apex angle of this cone could be 30 degree but usually we are not going beyond, uh, above uh, 20 degree as a total angle and 10 degree as the half apex angle so you can see it over here this is a conical type of arrangement which will be having here the diameter which will be uh, in relation to the id od or the center line of the vessel and at the base you will be having a flared up or the increased diameter with base ring top ring gussets as per the requirement so here what happens as you can see the loads are coming vertically straight right so the load is coming like this but it is getting transferred like this and then to the foundation so what will happen here you can uh, you can feel that there will be higher stresses which will be getting developed so when this flare type of construction is there and if the equipment height and the weight is on the very higher side then usually customer is asking for a special analysis for this skirt to shell junction so in that case we are usually performing an fea analysis for the same so localized bending stress induced localized bending stress induced at a junction at the head to cylindrical uh, head to skirt shell junction can become excessively high and may have to be analyzed more thoroughly if required detailed fe analysis uh, needs to be performed for the local stresses which are developed in the dished end or shell to which this skirt is attached over here or welded over here so this is also very very important if we'll be using the flaring uh, flare type of uh, supports like this then the spatial analysis might be asked by the customer. 